All right, here's one of my rarest uh, LP record sets. It's uh, Walt Whitman, who's, my, in my opinion, the greatest American poet by long chalk. And I have recordings of just about everything that's worth having of uh, Walt Whitman that's in recorded form, record, tape, etc. Uh, CD, the whole you know, sort of gamut of different recordings, MP3. And uh, this is, uh, it's called The Drift of Walt Whitman. That was what the uh, release was called. There we are, look, this lovely cover. It's a Japanese issue by the, uh, well, Tabundo is the label, but it's actually Toshiba Records famous electronics company that was in the record business for a while and uh, this was compiled and read by the uh, by Professor William L. Moore, William Luther Moore who was working for the Christian University in Tokyo at the time in 1966 when this beautiful record was put together it's uh, got incidental music uh, on the Biwa and the uh, uh, was it Shakuhachi Shaku, yeah, Shaku Harchi by, uh, let's try and pronounce this, just, there we go, uh, Kakusi, uh, Kakusi uh, Yamamoto, and uh, it's an absolutely gorgeous, it's my absolute favourite uh, Walt Whitman record set, it's a free record set, got this lovely booklet, Arrangement, uh, the arrangement of the the selected readings from Walt Whitman's Leaves of Grass. As I say, I think it was 1966 when it was issued. William L. Moore, who uh, passed away, I think it was about 1995, and uh, there's not a great deal about him on the internet. I couldn't find a picture. I wrote to the uh, Christian University in, uh, in in Japan, but I didn't get an answer. I wrote to his uh, the uh, the last uh, university he worked for in America. But uh, he, uh, they they did write back. They didn't have a, a portrait or a photograph that they could send me. But uh, this guy really knew Walt Whitman. He really was the definitive uh, expert on Walt Whitman. And his, his readings are so knowledgeable. You can just tell that the guy really had insight into this great poet. Is the text really, it's just the text really from the records. Okay, that's the cover of the booklet. And uh, it came with this lovely uh, book as well. This big binding, uh, big uh, volume of the uh, leaves of grass. I'm going to just Take it out of the cover here. Yeah, there we go. It's quite a heavy thing to do with one hand. There we go. Let's put that down there for a second while I try to film it for you. There we go. Leaves of Grass, Walt Whitman. With prose essences by William L. Moore. Uh, preface by Gay Wilson Allen. Calligraphy by Kazuko. Okamato. So there's all these lovely uh, images in there as well by this Japanese artist. It really weighs a bit. <laughs> but anyway, let's have a quick flick through it. So it's extremely rare this uh, this record. Uh, I've got two copies of it, and I think there may I think uh, recently I've seen one more up on the internet selling for about two hundred pounds. Such a lovely record that if I didn't have a, these two copies, I'd have probably bought that one. Okay. There we are, look, 1966, copyrighted 1966 by William L. Moore. Just kind of a. Let's see if I can find, uh, I think I passed that there, there was a, some Japanese calligraphy. Let's have a look. Ah. There's Gay Wilson Allen. I don't know if I've got uh, any more here now. Because it's the other way up, I've got to have a look this way around and see what it says. On the, oh, Charles Feinberg. 
uh, Whitman scholar and the eminent collector of Whitman materials. Let's see, I don't think there's a picture of William Elmore. That's Mickle Street, uh, New York, where uh, well, Camden, uh, New Jersey in uh, 1890, that's where Whitman lived, that's his house there. Uh, the street where his house was. These are images you can see on the internet quite a bit. He was a pioneer, uh, you know, before the age of film. He realised that if he wanted to be remembered, he had to uh, do lots of poses for photographers. Look, there he was, a young man, they were posing. See if I can find a little bit of the uh, Japanese calligraphy, the uh, just some of the. There we are. Look, as you go through it, you've got these lovely Japanese letters going through it. Absolutely gorgeous record set, and this uh, volume of Leaves of Grass is my absolute favourite. Uh, compilation of uh, Walt Whitman's work in, in book form. Right, I'm going to play you uh, a track from this uh, free record set. It's on red vinyl. Look, lovely red vinyl. And it's uh, Faces from Leaves of Grass, read by William L. Moore. Faces. Sauntering city streets and country roads, infinite faces I see, infinite variety, molded out of the gamut of character, health, mental reach. The magnetic face, the benevolent, the artist's questioning face, the grand judges, the old mothers, the sacred infants, the abjects, the lovers, the man snakes, the castrate teas, the idiots, the epileptics, the ugly face of some beautiful soul, the handsome of some detested man dog. I see them all, am content with all. You with faces favored, I love. You with faces unfavored, I understand and am patient. Your spots, cracks, cadaverousness, your watery eyes, bitter lines, twisted lips, do not depress me. I see beyond them promises you cannot imagine. A face indecent to behold will, after ages of coming and going, show its descent from the master himself. Song of Myself. I hear geologists, theologians, doomsayers talking of the beginning and of the end. I neither join them nor acquiesce. Never was creation richer than it is now, nor death more quickly succeeded by birth. This stage of evolution is as perfect in its way as stages to come will be perfect in theirs. This earth arc is all that we shall ever know of heaven or hell. My soul is not in exile here. Myself and mine. With health and a clear mind, I practice the manly talents. I live by nonconformity, challenging the eminent to challenge me. I hear I am accused of not finishing what I begin, of saying only half what I mean. I reply, I am not an answerer but an arouser of unanswerable questions. To no terminus do I bring you, but into live regions previously unattained. Henceforward, there is no rest. Understanding something of me, do not attempt to expound me, or build a theory, or found a school on me. These things I cannot even do for myself. I charge you to leave all free to come to me in their own way, and in their own time, as I have left all free. 
Into the years I go with no time to lose, not by rote, nor by pages memorized, by language rehearsed, nor reminiscences rechewed, do I sustain myself. I thrive on vistas spreading out before me as I rise with the dawn and walk into the day. The semen of this hour, the dreams, decisions, discoveries, will spin through centuries to come. Song of Myself I anticipate the deformed tree or the unfinished infant pushed up out of the hot, steamy pregnancy of earth. Yet I hear some remonstrating with the celestial against laws imperfect, berating him for circumstances unpropitious. In nature there is a balance to console the despondent. Let him use the gift of this moment to perceive it. Song of Myself I say, hurrah for science, you dictionary makers, archaeologists, navigators, anatomists. You support my intuition. I proclaim you far and wide. But gentlemen, having long traveled at ease without your facts, I do not stop now to dwell in them. Useful, but of themselves nothing. They only point to reality. Yet. Long live exact demonstration. Honors to you, scientists. Starting from Pomonoke. I hear you speak of religion, meaning catechism, form. I speak of religion beyond catechism and form. I say everything is religion. Nothing there is that is not religion. The earth, the stars, democracy's emergence, oneself divine. None knows his own infixed divinity. None knowing half the objects of worship, none has worshipped half enough. That which coheres these states and the men and women of these states must be religion. Else America will be but a map maker's marker and democracy must await another age. Young man buried in ambitions, in politics, in studies of literature and science, think you to be in pursuit of holes? These are but paths to the whole. I do not chide you. Finding your way at last, you will understand me. Song of Myself Mine are not the thoughts of a man, but of man. They are yours else they are nothing but fantasy. What I speak of is as common as grass, as universal as air bathing the earth. Song of Myself Among you heroes hungering, among you discouraged and despised desperately hungering, I come one as strong, as weak as yourselves. Appearing naturally as showers in April, I bear this invitation of God to you. The feast that begins with observing a spear of grass is spread for all, is forbidden to none. Does my annunciation astonish you? Then the audacious dawn and the song of the red bird astonish you. Song of the Answerer who shall soothe the restless questioners descending from Eden? Who shall indicate perfect sanity, beauty, justice, possess divine instinct, vision, reason, walk among nations to the welcoming shouts of friends, the answerer of men come on earth once in a millennium, what manner of man shall he be? A poet, an old soul, one in the descent of the Buddhas, one who has this day put God's words on his lips. How do we know him when he comes? A fisher of humanity, magnetic is he, a translator of every man and woman. To religion, science, war, peace, to races and individuals, he gives balance. Newspaper reports of politics and daily behavior by him are transfigured into significance. 
From president to field hand, no man he slights. All feel themselves his brothers. To the Jew, he is a Jew. To the Indian or Arab, one of theirs. The mechanic claims him. The rough deck hand and the gentleman claim him. The prostitute and the evildoer, immersed in the light of his presence, are transmuted. Whoever by the poet's faith is powered at last, translates himself, embarks toward meaning, deterred by nothing, not even by thoughts of death. To a common prostitute, be composed, be at ease with me. I am Walt Whitman, liberal and lusty as nature. Not till the sun excludes you do I exclude you. Not till the waters refuse to glisten for you and the leaves to rustle for you do my words refuse to glisten and rustle for you. My girl, I appoint you with an appointment and I charge you that you make preparation to be worthy to meet me. And I charge you that you be patient and perfect till I come. Till then, I salute you with a significant look that you do not forget me. Out of May's shows selected, of May's splendors, which shall I select? Her orchards abloom, her lilacs profuse, her green and sprightly mornings, her golden fertile afternoons. <laughs> to the supper and talk. Supper finished, talk ended, day done. A far journey of no return before him. Friend prolongs his goodbye to friend, holding hands to the end, enticing the last warm syllable, taking the last long look, calling back charges from the shadows of descending stairs. Farewell, echoing farewell into the night, gone, lost forever. My 71st year. In bivouac, after a march of 70 years with wearying losses en route, this old soldier answers roll call with a full voiced, here, and salutes his commander. Song of Myself. I tramp the perpetual journey. Passing me on the way, would you recognize me? I am always dressed for weather and carry a stout staff. Hospitable and friendly you will find me, but I will not sit you in an easy chair and talk esoterics. Do not ask me which is my church, my university, where my library is, what my school of philosophy is called. I have none of these. Wanting the only thing I can give you, hail me as I pass. I will turn and lead you upon a knoll and point to the unending road of seekers ranging across continents and archipelagos, elevating to magnificent vistas. Questions I hear you asking me, I answer that I cannot answer. But this I must say, once you habit yourself to the dazzle of the light, feel the sea dashing through your hair, you will never lie by again, nor be content to take things second-handed, nor look through the eyes of the dead in books. Drawing room discourse on love and death will make you tired and sick. Soon, unaccountably, you will wander off by yourself, and in the mystical, moist night air, filter all things through your pores again. I cannot rehearse you for your journey. Come, shoulder your duds, let us hasten forth. Long enough have you dreamt petty dreams. Now I shake you awake. I give you mountain water, son. Taste it and go look for the spring. Whoever you are holding me now in hand, you who are holding my book, holding me in your hand, 
Do you find me compelling? Think you want to follow me? Be a candidate for my affections? I am not at all what you suppose, and I am demanding. Coming to me, you must pry loose forever from conformity. Give up all profit, enter a long and exhausting novitiate. Are you ready to abandon the whole past theory of your life? Accept another without certainty? You study these leaves at your peril. Put me down and depart. Or else, alone with me in some outdoor place, I will never come to you inside a house, a library, or in the clatter of a boot. Perhaps in a secluded wood, back of a rock, on a high hill with a view for miles around, or sailing at sea, you will accept my demands. You will give yourself over to me completely, thrust me deep into your being, and carry me a lifetime over land and water. Still you do not put me down. I know you do not understand me. Not by reading this book will you find me or best admire me. Unless you can guess the way to me, I will elude you. Unless you possess one thing, the vista so familiar, so dear to me, you will never see. You ask what I am hinting at. Intuition, health, love, athletic plunges into life and joyous acceptance of death at the end. I will not say. There is still time to release me and depart. Song of Myself The sun's last ray Waiting to light me on the way I depart I am like a comet Consuming itself in flight My flesh drifting earthward In lacy ash I bequeath myself to the dirt To grow with the grass I love If you want me again Look for me under your boot soles You may hardly know yet Who I am what I mean, but I shall be good health to you, shall filter and fiber your blood. Failing to grasp me at first, keep encouraged. Missing me in one place, search another. I stop somewhere waiting for you. Hope you enjoyed that. That was a selection of uh, readings from this absolutely gorgeous record set. Uh, I have a pretty uh, phenomenal collection of uh, recordings of poetry on uh, on on uh, on record, ranging from uh, you know from uh, LP to uh, 78 RPM record, uh, 45 RPM, 16 and two thirds RPM. And uh, Walt Whitman's one of my special subjects. I absolutely love the the words of Walt Whitman. There was something very special about this this, uh, this man. He, uh, without rhyming, he never tried to rhyme. He didn't write uh, poems that rhymed. His poems were really philosophy, and uh, and a sort of uh, an outlook on on life, and uh, and uh, just something very special that sort of lives on in, in your mind and. Uh, and listening to it read so beautifully by um, Professor William L. Moore, who in 1966, when he recorded this, was working in uh, Japan. Japan has a has a great respect for Walt Whitman. They can they uh, they absolutely you can tell from this record they absolutely adore the uh, the, the writings of Whitman. And uh, he was working for the Christian University. And if you look uh, on the internet, you'll find the the about the the only entry about him is um, it was the almost I think it was his obituary by the university he worked for. I can't remember where it was now. But if you look up William L. Moore, the L stood for Luther, and I think he died in about 1995. And the uh, university uh, published a a, a gorgeous uh, obituary of him and said something about him. Unfortunately, I've not been able to find any photographs or very little in the way of uh, biographical information, but. Uh, this record, it really lives in my heart, such a special collection. Hope you enjoyed watching this little video.
Thanks for watching.